Grab your overalls, Wargamers, because today we're fighting the Battle of Silcock Farm. This is the first battle in the first Elopation War. For those of you that are new to the channel, new to the campaign, we're experimenting with William Sylvester's excellent The Solo Wargaming Guide, and we've put together a war between the forces of the Dextromanians in blue and the Sinistrians in red. The Dextromanians are invading. They are in the foothills and approaching the capital of Sinistrea. Here's the overall campaign map. And what we've got is a one-two punch. The first army group led by General Johan, and here he is right there, by General Johan is now trying to punch through to invest Leftopolis. Opposing him is a very small Sinistrean force and they have opted to defend the hills outside of town. So that's why this is a largely unfair fight. Because it all stems from this more organic campaign. What are the victory conditions? Well, I don't know. Uh, do these guys want to inflict maximum damage here, or do they want to move as many forces off the battle map as possible? Yeah, either of those would be just fine. For their part... The Sinistraeans want to do as much damage as possible because they're actually, from a strategic point of view, buying time. There's a second army, Army Group South, which is throwing a wild right hook marching towards Fourth Right City. If they can get there and take Fourth Right City, they may actually trade capitals and be forced to sign some kind of a peace treaty that puts everything back the way it was, except with a whole lot of dead bodies left behind. Very European war style here. Black Powder Era, we are using 2x2 two two Napoleonics. The only real difference from this battle to Napoleonics is that we don't have any horse artillery. It's all foot artillery, so it's going to be very slow. Uh, to set the stage for this battle, the blue forces are trying to get to Leftopolis, which is a couple of miles that way. I don't know, like four or five miles. Easy day's march. They woke up in the morning and found... Their first, their outriders found the first resistance. And the question is, the real question is, how on the ball are they? What time do they finally get up everything organized and get ready to fight the battle? Clearly they were marching along the road in column when they said, oh, we better get set up. How long do they wait? Because again, delaying tactics. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll a D6. We're going to add six to that. And that's going to be the time in the morning that they start. They only have until 6 p.m. At 6 p.m., this battle is being fought in mid-October. At 6 p.m. it gets too dark, and both sides have to basically pull back from the fight and retreat to their camp. So we're going to add two, and we're going to start the battle at 8 a.m. with the Sinistrean. So a lucky break for Team Blue. They got the jump, they ate their Wheaties, and they got an early start to the day. They got set up, and 11 turns, they're going to need every single one of them to come to come to grips with the red team. The way the rules work in this game, you have a couple, you, you have a couple of, um, what do you call them? Um, reserve points that you can bring troops on through the course of the game. You got to roll for those. You'll see how it works here in a little bit, but because they're the attackers, defenders get to move first and the defenders need that because they really want to kind of take the heights up here. Infantry only move three inches. We're going to stop there, and we're going to go ahead and send this infantry down the hill two inches. It costs a third inch to cross the river, so they've spent that third. On the next turn, they're going to try to secure the bridge. We'll go ahead and slide this cannon over, and we'll slide these guys over to protect the cannon as well. Meantime, we're not going to bring this cavalry on. The turn order goes move, rally, shoot, melee. Move, rally, shoot, melee. So it being their turn, they definitely want to bring on some reinforcements, and they want to bring on the... What do we think here? Because there's some cavalry down here, that might be an issue. We're going to bring on the artillery first. Maybe they can set up and just pound these guys into submission. You get two rolls. Coming on from the flanks, you need to roll a 4-plus to come on. So the first one comes on, and the second one comes on as well. Artillery are fairly slow, however, so they're not going to be able to fire this turn. But at least they're on the board. We'll bring these guys up, and I think we'll ignore the road. You can buy yourself an extra 
inch of movement. Bring them over a little bit. And that is it for the first turn. It's now 9 a.m. And Red Forces are still trying to get their st stuff together, so we'll move. And we'll bring this. Oh, this is a general who's going to hang out here on the slopes. I think that's it. We're not going to bring them on just yet. Or are we? Do we want to try to bring them over and chase them off before they arrive? That could be worthwhile. They have a maximum range of 8 inches. They have a maximum range of movement of 4 inches. It's going to be a turn or two of cannon fire. We want to avoid any light brigade action, so we're going to leave them there to threaten these guys. With the basic movement done, we're going to roll to bring on this unit of foot. And on a 2, they do not. And we'll roll for this unit of heavy cavalry, who on a 4, they do come on. It's going to cost them an inch to move on, and they get to move 4 inches. So now we have some secured flanks. Blue is cruising. That was the 9 o'clock hour. Again, there's no shooting, there's no um, rallying, so it is now 10 in the morning, and Red gets to go. It's time to bring these guys on and present some kind of a threat. We're going to move them up to here and see if we can maybe chase those guys off. And I think that's it for Red's movement, which means it's time for player 2 to shoot. They still don't have any, anybody to shoot. There's no melee. So we go to blue, moves and dices for reinforcements. They've got two. They might as well take advantage. They do not come on. They do not come on. Still out uh, hanging out somewhere, I guess. Since these guys are on the road, they do have the ability to move up four inches. And we'll go ahead and bring these guys up four inches as well. Coming in at much more of an oblique angle than anticipated, but with a heavy cavalry out there, I think their flanks are secure enough to get away with that. Now it's time for shooting. Pre-measurement is allowed. They get to shoot eight inches, so we can take a shot at those guys, and Red is absolutely going to do that. They're firing downhill, so they get a plus one. They are firing into a flank, so they are at an additional plus one. But they're artillery at long range. So we are at a total of plus, which is minus one. So we're at a total of plus one to the die roll. And a three is not going to do it. After you fire, we drop a pinned marker on it. And... Player two, blue, resolves melee. They got none. So we're going to move on to blue gets to move. I think it's time to do the final movement to prepare for bombardment. And we're going to go two and rotate that way. Bring him there. Open fire. And we'll bring these guys three inches We'll bring in the full four. We'll leave the road to come up. We're going to come over this way a little bit more. Somewhat of a staggered line, but we'll take it because these guys are more than happy to secure that flank. In fact, we're going to leave them back a little bit. See what we can do there. Should probably bring this general up, and let's try to keep him kind of towards the center. Blue has moved. Oh, you know, I think I did that backwards. Okay, I see what I did wrong. I skipped a red move. On red's move, he really should have come up here and tried to rally him, which uh, with a five, you rally on a five or, five or better. If he's connected, you get a plus one. So he does rally. Blue moves, he gets to take another shot. He's going to have to fire here. But now that he's got a guy, uh, now that he's got a headquarters adjacent to him, he gets a plus one for firing downhill. He gets a plus one for the flank and a plus one for the general, minus one for the distance. So this is a total of plus two to the die roll. And with a four, it's no effect. And he is once again pinned. So with that, it is now noon.
we'll go ahead and tighten everything up. It is time for red to move. Red has no movement. Um, but, 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 no, do we want to bring him up? I think we want to bring him up to here. And we're going to force a confrontation there. And we're going to bring these guys. I wonder if we should retreat back or move up to engage. I think we have to move up to engage. It's going to take some time, but they can move two inches and get into the stream. It puts them at point-blank range, but they really have to try to take those guns out or they're just going to get shot to pieces over the next seven turns. That is the end of red movement. Blue now gets to shoot. And the only shot we have, they have a range of one inch. We have this cannon and this cannon can both take a shot. He's going to fire here. He's going to fire here. And that's going to be at a total of the target. Let's see. Artillery at short range. So they get a plus one for that. And I think that's it. Yep. Plus one for that. So looking for a four is not going to do it. Second shot, we're going to go ahead and fire at this guy uh, because he's marching. You know, we can move him over there just to make sure that it's pretty clear what's going on here. Um, he is... Oh, blue is shooting on a five. Just outside of an inch. It's a straight five, so that means the target is... Oh, those guys are pinned as well. So everybody's pinned. How far away is he? Ooh, he's just, just at six inches. Man, this is a game of millimeters, isn't it? Blue has now resolved all of their shooting. Red is now going to resolve melee, which they don't have any. Blue now moves and dices for reinforcements. Let's do the reinforcements before we forget. They need a four plus, and they need a four plus. The cavalry over there, neither of them get it. So now it's just up to moves. we got a heavy cavalry moving four inches to contact here. We're going to march three inches to here, three inches to here, three, three. We'll bring him. He's going to have to choose. We can slide over a little bit more, but that's not going to do it. He's going to have to choose whether to order these guys or protect those guys. Let's go ahead and leave him cheated this way a little bit so that he can focus on getting these guys unpinned. And then we're going to bring these guys into contact. Trying to at least pin them down, maybe take the bridge. And then it becomes a case of we've got two guys to rally over here. You rally on a 5 plus. And there are no modifiers. So the first guy doesn't. And the second guy does not. So they are still pinned. Which means it may not move. can only change facing. Oh, it may fire normally. Okay, so what we've done is we've bogged down into a, a shooting match over here. Player 2 resolves melee. So we've got a melee over here, and this is a simple dice off. It's going to be a 5 versus a 6 with... The heavy cavalry versus heavy cavalry. The loser routes, which means on a one or a two, the blue heavy cavalry is destroyed. It's not. Instead, it's going to move uh, five inches. It's maximum move, which is, excuse me, four inches, directly to its rear or directly away from the guys that caused them. So they moved there, and then they are disrupted. They are not allowed to move or shoot and are more vulnerable to attacks until that headquarters comes over and rescues them or until these cavalry who have yet to make an appearance get their butts on board. That is the end of the 12 o'clock hour. They now have one, two, three, four, five, six more turns to force... Oh, no, that's not right. We got another melee over here. 
And in a melee, there are ba -ba -ba -ba, no modifiers. Red wins this one. So these guys turn around and move three inches directly away, and they are now disrupted. Which makes it easy to understand what this general is going to do on his turn, because it's actually Team Red's turn here in the 1 o'clock hour. Team Red gets to move. They don't want to. Uh, we'll bring... Is this... Yeah, he's just barely. So the, there's no movement involved here. Uh, or is there? They're going to move directly on top of the bridge, and that's it. That gives them an opportunity. Or do they go ahead and move three inches to there? I think they do. We're going to move them to there. We're going to see if we can wipe out those cannons, because that'll hurt them when it comes siege time. I forgot, on their last turn, they do have the option of following up, which they are going to take. And it doesn't really make any difference. I mean, if they'd move in pursuit or right now, either way, they are still locked horns with that heavy cavalry. That's it for movement. Now we roll to recover. They are going to roll on a five or better. They are unpinned. So try that again. Try it on the board. So they're still pinned. They can't move, but they can shoot. But it's not their turn to shoot. It's actually Blue's turn to shoot. So we've got a shot here and a shot here. And we'll roll first for these guys. And a one is nothing. We'll roll for these guys. We'll wait for it. All right, a four. Artillery at short range, that becomes a five. And I think that's it. Artillery, you can shoot. Yeah, so five. So they are also pinned. They're not going to be able to melee, which is unfortunate for them. Um... I forgot to roll for rallying. Did I forget to roll for rallying? Let me check the tape. Pretty sure I did. Let's see if these guys rally. On a four, that's a no. And over here, on a two, that is also a no. Uh, they do have a couple of bonuses. It's not going to make any difference. Uh, we are done with red's section of the turn. We move on to blue. And blue is going to move, hmm, we're going to move, does, does moving uphill, hills have no cost, okay, so we're going to engage a headquarters, we're going to engage an artillery, and we're going to engage here. And then we'll bring these guys up to there. We'll bring this headquarters over to here. And we'll see what happens. Player two gets to rally units. So we've got one, two, three. Well, they're too far away. So we'll go ahead and uh, roll to recover here. Nothing. We'll roll to recover here. Nothing. We'll roll to recover this disrupted unit. And he does not recover. Red player now gets a turn to shoot. And he's got two shots over here. Basically, given the fact that these guys are pinned, anything, they're looking for sixes. So this one first is a six, and this one is a one. So the six disrupts this cannon. And that means the cannon, until it rallies, it may not fire or move. It is also more vulnerable to, to attack. So I'm going to turn it around and put a disrupted unit on, marker on it. And then that's it for shooting. So now we just do some melees. I think I forgot to do this melee on Red's turn. So we'll start there. Red, got to do some math here. That becomes a 10, this is a 5. With a difference of 5, 
these heavy cavalry are now destroyed. So we'll move them up here. We'll move them down into the graveyard down here. Looking down here, we've got a couple of melees. Uh, the modifiers that we're looking at are a total of, these guys all have plus one. Well, he has a plus one. For a two versus a two, and on a tie, we reroll. Losing by one, the loser routes, so they're going to turn around and move one, two inches, and become disrupted. Here, if you're pinned, do you have higher than opponent, you get a plus one, and if these guys are in contact, you get a plus one here, so, oh, wait a minute, unit is artillery, headquarters, light infantry, he's at a minus one, so he is disrupted. And this headquarters is at a minus three. So a zero, no, he's at a minus two, so that's a tie, we re-roll. And this headquarters is also routes off the page. He's disrupted. If it ends its move, move back, pin, pin, pin to red. Okay, there we go. So the general has now left the field with the headquarters drawn off and the line disrupted here, uh, we're going to declare this a victory for Team Blue. We'll have to see how Pyrrhic it is because we've got a lot of different factors to figure out in the um, post-battle sequence. We have a couple of units that are left abandoned. They're not quite cut off. If these guys can get across before these guys can get across, they may be cut off. But this is the line of retreat for Team Red, and they may be able to get back to the city of Leftopolis to prepare for a full-blown siege with the bulk of their numbers intact. A couple of mitigating factors here. You've got a heavy cavalry unit that's still alive, and they should be able to help run interference for the guys that are marching back. It's only noon, so... You know, if if they have to, if they're hard pressed, they can get to the city. Uh, there are some casualties that the Blue Army is going to have to deal with, and of course, the Blue Army knows they've got reinforcements coming up behind them. So we're going to pull the curtain on the day's action with a solid victory with the overwhelming numbers for the Dextromanians, and in our next video. We'll roll some dice to figure out what the ultimate impact of this defeat for the badly outnumbered Red Army is. And we'll take a look at what it means for the strategic level. Look for that in a couple of days. In the meantime, remember, I'm praying for you.